Good morning, everybody. This is a live update as it appears that a multi-day severe weather outbreak with serious tornado potential could be on tap from Monday into Tuesday. This is Monday's Storm Prediction Center outlook showing the 30% area from northwest Texas, western into central Oklahoma, into south central Kansas. And this is a classic megatroph ejection, folks. The GFS, the European model, and especially the latest NAM model are definitely showing a more classic trough ejection for big time severe weather across the southern plains. This is similar to like May 20, 2019, May 24, 2011, some other analogs, April 12, 2014, which is a big, big southern plains outbreak from southern Kansas into northern Oklahoma. And then, of course, May 3rd, 99 is one of those analogs as well. And here you can see the trough spreading off to the northeast. That's going to bring the severe weather across Portland of Missouri, Illinois, maybe even up to Indiana on Thursday. So we definitely do have a two-day outbreak. This trough even coming in back behind it could lead to severe weather on Wednesday too. But look at this, a classic mega trough ejection. That strong flow is rounding the base of the trough and then ripping across the southeastern portion of the trough just in time for peak heating for big severe weather across Oklahoma and Kansas. Here's the European model, even a little bit more classic of a trough ejection. And the NAM model actually has a more potent Vortmax punching into Kansas, similar to the European model. Uh, but that's definitely a classic Southern Plains severe weather event. This is a trough in the upper levels, actually the mid-levels of the troposphere. I like to start off there and look at the trough geometry, basically the shape of these troughs as they eject. And when you have that strong flow rounding the base of the trough like this, the nose of that jet streak uh, timed perfectly with peak heating and even potentially the magic hour uh, just after that, about 6, 7, 8 p.m. when that low-level uh, shear ramps up even more. Zooming in a little bit on this bowling ball trough ejection, there's the cold core aloft right there and all of these mid-latitude troughs like this these rossby waves up here uh, at the mid at the extra tropics are cold core that means that they have a lot of cold air aloft basically a cold bowling ball and then the jet stream is strongest along the temperature gradient along the southeastern periphery of that cold air and the nose of that jet comes right up into the southern plains on monday right during peak heating and that could set the stage for significant severe weather. A dry line is going to march from the Texas Panhandle into western Oklahoma by late afternoon into the evening hours. Supercells are likely to erupt from western Oklahoma all the way up into western Kansas ahead of that bowling ball trough ejection. And right now, the NAM model is showing the thickest instability co-located with the strongest low-level shear over western Kansas. But you're also going to see those supercell storms build down to the dry line into western Oklahoma as well. A little bit stronger capping as you go further south, so those storms could be just a little bit more isolated. Looking at that cold core aloft, there you can see it. Those cold temperatures, colder than minus 20 degrees Celsius, diving south and then ejecting right across the southern plains before heading up to portions of the Midwest, Illinois, eastern Iowa. Missouri could see that severe weather on Thursday as that uh, megatroph lifts off to the northeast. But first, let's look at the Southern Plains on Monday, Monday afternoon. This is the low-level jet, and look at that explosion of a low-level jet over Kansas and Oklahoma across the Southern Plains. That's because of that textbook upper-level trough shape. You have an open wave coming in. You have a lot of pressure falls, intense cyclogenesis, a nice surface low coming out of eastern Colorado, moving through Kansas, and then a dry line is going to march from the Texas Panhandle into western Oklahoma, extending south from that surface low. And that also is going to be the focus for more supercell development. Different than the previous systems across the Southern Plains, even the Alta Vista Day, this system is not moisture starved. You're going to have dew points well into the 60s. They're already in place before the event arrives. And I do think that the European model is definitely underestimating the sharpness of that dry line as it moves from the Texas Panhandle into western Oklahoma on Monday. Likely it's going to lead to big time severe weather as well. Let's drill down a little bit closer and look at the NAM model. First of all, this is the European surface low, and it meanders a little bit as it's forming out of eastern Colorado and moves across northern Kansas, about a 990 millibar low. And right now, the European model almost looks like a nocturnal event, but it's probably uh, just uh, not quite resolving the development of those uh, low-level thermodynamics just yet. But we look at the NAM model, and wow, what is this thing? This is just incredible. Monday evening, 0Z. This is at about 7 p.m. Look at that NAM model. There's your bowling ball trough. You're at 500 millibars. 
big, strong jet streak along the southeastern quadrant. That co-locates with the gradient due to the thermal wind relation. Temperature gradient below that level uh, definitely coincides with the strongest low-level jet. The NAM model definitely likes a little bit tighter to the Vortmax in terms of where the most significant severe weather is going to be. Look at that low-level jet axis. The strongest low-level jet is certainly on the Kansas side, at least on the NAM model solution. Nice dry line bulge coming into western Kansas, but you do have a nice ribbon of a low-level jet extending down into western Oklahoma, at least northwestern Oklahoma as well, a 50-knot low-level jet. So any storms that are able to develop off the dry line into western Oklahoma will also have the potential of producing tornadoes. And we'll jump on over to our composite index, the 0 to 1 kilometer energy helicity index, basically showing you where the low-level wind shear coincides with surface base instability. And it definitely looks like western into central Kansas. You have the thicker instability axis, even into western Nebraska. Looks pretty significant. There's a PDS tornado sounding as well. Look at that textbook photograph there. A lot of instability as well. Uh, just a loaded gun sounding over there big time instability but really the low level wind shear is extreme with your surface wind south southeast at about 20 knots your one kilometer wind at 60 knots right there that's going to create a near 40 knot shear vector from the surface wind up to a kilometer and that's why you have this massive hump on that hodograph with a northeast mover up into kansas at about 50 knots Elevated mixed layer comes in, of course, with that textbook trough ejection where the green line separates from the red line a little bit. That's going to clear out the clouds. And there's your low-level jet, a ripper of a low-level jet in excess of 50 knots. And that's over top, those southeasterly surface winds, creating extreme low-level wind shear. And on this sounding, you actually have 0 to 1 kilometer storm relative felicity in excess of 400, which is extreme. Definitely supportive of a high-end tornado potential here across the southern plains. Definitely an event where we're going to need the Dominator 3 as well to intercept. Still trying to figure out personnel as well. Uh, Mike Scantlin and Connor McRory want to come up and ride as well. Uh, Jordan and Sierra I'm also considering uh, for the Dominator 3 as well. Um, I might even just ride in a follow vehicle and have them take the Dominator 3, and then I can get that view of the taillights of the Dominator 3 going into the tornado, and then maybe I'll zip by in the Subaru at the last second and intercept myself as well. But here you can see... The NAM is overblowing that surface low likely as it often does, over deepens the surface low. It'll probably be more of a 990, maybe an upper 980s surface low. And it also is quite far north with that surface low here, northeastern Colorado, a little bit further north than some of the other forecast models. The NAM model's a little bit further south of that surface low. The G, or excuse me, the GFS actually has a 984 as well. And the GFS and the NAM model are definitely in agreement. You can see a little bit of convective feedback here in southwest Oklahoma. Definitely showing a little bit more backing with the meso low moving out of southwest Oklahoma. Could be an I-44 ripper coming out of southwest Oklahoma into central Oklahoma there. Big backed winds as well on our GFS model. And look at the GFS. Just has an eruption of an MCS there over western Oklahoma off that dry line. GFS has a 991 millibar low at 18Z about midday. Deepens over northeastern Colorado. Some snow in the mountains of Colorado as well. Probably some heavy snow over the north central mountains of Colorado. And there's your eruption of the convection on the GFS model. But the GFS has a little bit of a dirty trough ejection compared to the NAM. See what I mean by dirty? You kind of have these impulses that come out. You have a lead impulse here, main jet streak back behind it. Not quite as potent of a Vortmax there over Colorado as the NAM model is showing. There's the GFS, and we're going to pop on over to the NAM. And look at that. That's a clean trough ejection with a potent Vortmax over southern Colorado. If this model happens, if the NAM model solution happens with this upper level trough, then this is going to be a significant tornado outbreak western Kansas into western Oklahoma, probably up into Nebraska as well at the nose of that jet streak. And that's at 18Z. We jump over to the 12Z NAM. Not a lot of change between 6Z and 12Z, but then look at that Vortmax. It actually intensifies as it lifts from southern Colorado up to northeastern Colorado. That's a very potent Vortmax there. You can see the cold core aloft. All these mid-latitude troughs have cold cores aloft here in the extra tropics. Unless you're talking about a subtropical lower, definitely a tropical system. That's a barotropic environment. 
uh, void of these temperature gradients. You're talking about a baroclinic environment here, and you can definitely see that sharp temperature gradient along the southern and southeastern periphery of the trough, and that's why you have their jet, the jet stream, jet streak just above that, the peak in the jet streak, jet stream right there going right into the southern plains. And you got to wonder if you should target just east of that Vortmax here in western Kansas or a little bit further down the dry line where your upper level winds, mid and upper level winds are a little bit more westerly, more orthogonal to the dry line. But you do get that dry line that bulges back toward the Vortmax into western Kansas as well. So I do think that storms are going to have no problem moving off that boundary, whether you're in western Kansas all the way down into western Oklahoma. The dry line down here is more north-south and you still have these west-southwest to east-northeast oriented winds. And I bet we have a tighter dry line on the NAM model, and that's exactly what we have with that stronger Vortmax coming up through eastern Colorado. Dew points drop into the teens back behind it. Dew point of 13, 14, 17, 19 in the Texas Panhandle. That's a very sharp dry line advancing into western Oklahoma and uh, moving into western Kansas. Looks like you do have some better moisture uh, southwest Kansas and the northwest Oklahoma, a lot like April 12, 2014, of course. And you click on a forecast sounding near the Pratt area. PDS tornado soundings all over the place with the NAM model solution. A little bit further south into northwest Oklahoma. Looks like you have a capping inversion as you go a little bit further south according to the NAM model with that Vortmax coming off to the north. So look at the NAM model. You can see that capping inversion. That little uh, warm nose right there just above the ground. That could limit convective initiation uh, down a little bit further south into western Oklahoma. At least that's what the NAM model is starting to show. But this at least breaches in northwest Oklahoma into southwestern Kansas all the way up to the east of that Vortmax where you get a little colder air aloft. Up near the I-70 corridor, you have even more favorable wind shear. See how that hodograph gets an even greater hump on it. PDS tornado sounding, easily breachable cap as well on that forecast sounding. Notice how as you go a little bit further north into western Kansas, at least with the NAM model solution with that Vortmax, you get a weaker capping inversion and greater surface base instability and also some greater low-level wind shear. Look at this massive hump-shaped hodograph right there with a southwest and northeast storm motion at about 50 knots. This is going to be one of those severe weather events in the southern plains where you're so nervous you could barely even function. At least that's how I'm going to be. And, uh, you know, you got this strong dry line. Probably have some fire danger even here back behind the dry line. Wind's about 30 knots. Look at the convergence along that dry line from southwest Nebraska through western Kansas all the way into northwestern Oklahoma. You lose a little bit of that convergence down a little bit further south on the NAM solution down into western and southwestern Oklahoma. But some of the other models, of course, even have more backing winds in southwest Oklahoma, the global models, certainly. It'll be very interesting as we get a little bit closer to the convective allowing models to see where they resolve some of these important features like the surface low, bulging dry line, warm frontal zone, as well off to the north, any meso lows that may come in from the south, Will we have a clean trough ejection like the NAM is depicting here? Or will it be a little bit of a more dirty trough ejection like some of the global models like the GFS are starting to show? The ensemble models, uh, different than the operational GFS, do show kind of a more clean trough ejection with a more potent Vortmax coming through eastern Colorado uh, into western Kansas. When that cold air aloft starts to move into that dry line, that's going to create major problems. The basics of instability as you get that cold, dry air coming over top, the instability and the moisture is at the uh, moisture at the low levels. Now we're going to hop on over to our machine learning products, the analog based outlooks and the storm prediction storm prediction center outlooks as well. Here's the the analog based outlook definitely has your classic southern plains ripper, western Kansas, western Oklahoma, even into the eastern Texas panhandle probably picks up on the fact that in the days leading up to the event, you might even have a little bit of some slowing down that happens. The machine learning products, of course, have the highest probabilities in northwest Oklahoma and to southwest Kansas, probably due to some of those analogs being similar to April 12, 2014, which I chased and got a tornado south of McPherson. Should have been in northwest Oklahoma on that day, though. But here's the Storm Prediction Center outlook with your 30% zone focused across the southern plains. And then the next day, your machine learning products eject across portions of northeastern Missouri into western Illinois, a very large 15% area by the Storm Prediction Center. But I wouldn't be surprised if a 30% area isn't added a little bit further north. Certainly could happen as well. So I think my target right now 
is probably southwest Kansas, maybe near the Dodge City area, probably into northwest Oklahoma as well, but that is subject to change. There are no awards given to those that commit too early to a target area. Definitely don't panic either. I'm just letting you know that there's a big time trough ejection coming out and the possibility exists for significant severe weather across the southern plains. And this is probably one of the more significant troughs that we have seen ejecting across the southern plains since about May 24, 2011, at least as it looks on the NAM model. And there's a very good chance uh, that the NAM model may be a little bit overblown, but Honestly, I think with the shape of that trough coming into the Southern Plains and just the nature of the seasonal cycle, I wouldn't be surprised if the tax day outbreak is actually a more significant outbreak as well. So thank you everybody for tuning in to this live emergency briefing. Thank you Team Dominator subscribers, especially for making these weather reports possible. Thank you so much for riding along in my passenger seat all these years. I really appreciate you. And remember those three most important words, never stop chasing.